Yep, that's my wife. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Good to see you all again here in this place and online viewers, wherever you are. Happy Mother's Day in Presbyterian Church uh, Canada. We celebrate this Sunday, Christian Family Sunday. So, happy Christian Family Sunday as well to you all. Um, announcements for today from Margaret. Good morning and happy Mother's Day to all mothers, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, stepmothers, and any woman who has been a model, role model, and mediator in any woman's lives. Uh, we bless you and we thank you. Uh, this morning our worship service is on our Facebook pages and through Roger's TV service as usual. Um, we would remind you that we have a prayer wall and we also have a prayer chain. If you have anybody who you know that is in uh, need of a prayer in mind, body, or soul, please call our office Monday to Friday in the mornings between nine and noon and Debbie will make sure that you are put on that chain and we will be sure to pray for you. We are lucky that no one in our church is in hospital at this time. If you do know someone that needs to be put on the wall, please let Debbie know that as well. Next Sunday, May 19th at 9.45, in front of the Yates Center downtown on 4th Avenue, there will be a brief ecumen sorry, ecumenical <laughs> Pentecost service, and it's just a very brief one. Everyone is welcome to attend. As everyone knows in the church, but for those people online, the church van is for sale. It's a 2005 Chevrolet Express 15 passenger van. The uh, mileage is very low on it. Uh, the van drivers are willing to pick up people still to bring them to church. Uh, you need to recall, request the pickup at the church office by 10 on Friday. Uh, please call the church office as well for information on the uh, Van Sale or Lawrence McCune, 403-715-2972. As you all know about Jace Parker, the little two-year-old who has been having chemotherapy treatments in Calgary and is now been having alternate treatments in Florida, there is a GoFundMe account available for him if you are interested. Those are all the announcements for today. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret, for the announcements. <clears throat> Friends, today um, our first hymn comes from hymn number 703, Happy the Home When God is There, and I invite you to stand if you are able.
Please be seated. Indeed, happy the home when God is there. Friends, um, I invite you to join me for the call to worship in responsive for today. Clap your hands, all you people. For God is awesome, reigning over all the earth. Let us worship God with all we have to offer. Let us pray. God of promise and purpose, we praise with thankful hearts as the beauty of the seasons change. The beauty of your world lifts our hearts in praise. You lifted up Jesus to be by your side, and so we know he is always by our side as the future opens before us. Show us the promise and purpose in our own lives, how we can Make the best of our life and move into the future empowered by the Holy Spirit, embraced by the love of Christ our Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, Amen. My friends, before we uh, come together for the prayer of confession, uh, today's hymn invite us to reflect on God's uh, goodness, grace, and mercy, hymn number 688, as water to the thirsty. Again, if you're able, I invite you to stand. Thank you. Please be seated. Friends, now with reference and in uh, unison, let's come for the prayer of confession. Lord Jesus Christ, you called followers to carry the good news of God's love and forgiveness to the ends of the earth. Yet we confess we cannot always find the words to tell others of our faith. We try to act out your love. But it's hard to tell others why we do what we do for you. Forgive us. Give us the courage to speak openly for our commitment to you. Amen. Now friends, remember the promise of the Apostle Paul declares. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Hardship, distress, peril, sword, neither death nor life, nor things present, nor things to come can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. So let us rejoice in that fact that no matter what is happening around us, no matter what we have done, God's deep love will never let us go. May the peace of Christ be with you today as you come to worship Him. And if you feel comfortable, how about we also pass the same peace of Christ that we receive to one another. Peace of Christ be with you as well online viewers wherever you are.
So friends, as promised last Sunday, uh, this Sunday we have special uh, choir, St. Andrew's Men's Choir. So welcome us, St. Andrew's Men's Choir. <laughs> Choir Lavinia for conducting uh, today's choir. Friends, now time for the young at hearts. Everyone, young at hearts, uh, young at age, you are welcome to join me on the steps here. We are going to talk about moms, mothers. Wonderful. So, oh hi Leo, welcome. So today we will talk about moms. So I want you to think about one particular event in your mom or in your life, in your relationship with your mom that stays that you feel that it will stay forever with you. And then summarize 
that event in your life with your mom in relationship, in relationship with your mom in one word? You think about an event in your life about your mom that will stay forever in your mind. And then summarize that event in one word. Okay? I have one event that I will never forget in relationship with my mom. And in one word, that word is prayerful. Prayerful. So, think about it for a few seconds. And then I will ask one of you or two of you. Okay? Think about an event, lovely events in your life. And then you summarize that in one word. For me, oh, that event, prayerful. Okay? Reagan. <laughs> Just one word. Amazing. Okay, thank you. Uh, Leo, you want to try, Leo? What is one word that you think about your mom? Happy. Oh, thank you. That's wonderful. Uh, Marcel, you want to say something? Supportive. Okay. Eva, if you don't mind. Probably music. Mm, music. Okay. Um, yeah, well. <laughs> now, okay, Bob, go ahead. Grateful. Now, let me tell you why I pick myself prayerful. Uh, when I was teenagers, like perhaps many of you also, uh, maybe only few of you, um, I was going straight. I didn't really follow uh, my parents' instructions, didn't really go to the church regularly and stuff like that. So at that time, we don't have a cell phone. So and I like to hang out with my friends, go out. I said to them, wait until my parents sleep. And then you give me code. Okay, when you arrive at home, you give me code. How do they give code without cell phone at that time? They throw a bottle to the front yard. That's what I know. Because my room right near the front yard. So they throw a bottle and then I know, okay, my friend is ready. I think if that, if I remember correctly, it was like around 11 o'clock. So before I sneak out from the house, I sneak my parents' room just to make sure. And I open the door. My mom kneeling down. She was praying. I closed the door again. And then I just sneak out for a while and said to my friends, I'm not going. You go. I'm not going. You go. That's one event that I will never forget. I was planning something bad. Before I execute that plan, I sneak and open the door. My mom kneeling down, praying. For some reasons, I assume that prayer is for me. So I said to my friends, you go, I'm staying. <laughs> so friends, whatever that one word that you just mentioned to me, amazing, happy, music, grateful, supportive, that story will stay forever in your uh, life. And today, for today, I have uh, written prayers for moms and let's say this prayer together, okay? This is the prayer for moms. Okay, let's, the best gift ever. Moms pray for us, now we pray for our moms. Gracious God, on this day of celebrating your love manifested through our mothers, we lift them up to you. We bless every mother with happiness and health, with peace and grace. We pray for their divine wisdom and patience as they fulfill their role in nurturing and guiding their children in your ways. We acknowledge the vast spectrum of motherhood represented among us today, those who have given birth and those who have taken on the mothering role, those who have lost children and those yearning to be mothers those with strained mother-child relationships, and those with strong bonds. We thank you for the gift of motherly love, 
both gentle and fierce, both strong and humble, both kind and true. Today, we honor these extraordinary women in our lives and lift them before you, asking that you bless them in your own special way. May they feel the depth of our appreciation and the fullness of your love and presence. Bless them, Lord, and may they stand as beacons of light in your kingdom, reflecting your love to all they meet. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you everybody for coming forward and sharing one word about your mom. In the coffee time, I will come to you and ask that story. You may be seated. <laughs> Thank you everybody. Uh, skip the reading for today. Thank you, Leo. Good job. Scripture reading today is from Proverbs 31, verses 10 to 31. You can find it on page 613 of the Pew Bible. Hear the word of the Lord. A capable wife who can find. She is more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will lack no gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant and brings her food, food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and tasks for her servants' girls. She considers a field and buys it with the fruit of her hands and she plants a vineyard. She grits herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hands to the poor and she reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid for her household where it snows, for all her households are clothed in crimson. She makes herself coverings, her clothing is of fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the city gates taking his seat among the elders of the land. She, meets linen, she makes linen garments and sells them. She supplies the merchants with sashes. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teachings of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the thread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her happy. Her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellency, but she surpasses them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who bears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the city gates. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to all. Thank you, Margaret. Friends, let us pray. Oh God, thank you for giving us mothers. By the power of your Holy Spirit, open our minds and hearts to receive your word so that we may recognize your call to us as we celebrate Mother's Day today. Amen. Happy Mother's Day once again to all of you. Today we celebrate they are incredible women in our lives. Women who embody the spirit of motherhood. They are strong and loving. And to all the moms and grandmothers, your love and your strength have shaped us in lasting ways. You have nurtured, thought, and guided us. And for that, we are grateful, forever grateful. We also recognize and honor the single ladies and widows among us who share their motherly love still so generously. Your strength and your compassion do not go unnoticed. And your presence is a blessing to our congregation and also wider community, to the married women without children who hold maternal love in their hearts, your caring nature touches our lives immeasurably. 
we treasure your kindness, patience, and insight, which you impart so generously. So on this day, we acknowledge that motherly love and strength come in many forms and many ways. And we are thankful for all of you who have shared this love with us. What a blessing to have loving and strong women in our lives. I am who I am, all because of loving and strong women in my life. My mom and my wife. I admire loving and strong women. From them I learned that nothing so strong as gentleness and nothing so gentle as true strength. And I think their love, their loving spirit and their strength are the magnificent testimonies to Christ. Strong and loving moms, they are like Christ himself in how they handle anger and sadness. They do not, they do not let anger turn into meanness and sadness into self-pity. Instead, they use their emotions to fight for what is right and they stay strong. Their hearts stay open even when they are hurting inside. These strong, loving and caring mothers show us the power of being kind yet fierce in spirit. Women who dare to say with Esther, I will do what needs to be done. If I perish, I perish. I love these brave women. If it were possible, I would marry them all. Of course, not in a real sense. And thanks be to God, I married one such woman. And I'm grateful that our church is home to many strong, loving, and courageous women. Mothers blend elements that the world cannot explain. A sweet, tender, kind, loving, submissive, feminine beauty with this massive steel in their backs and enduring faith in their souls. Mothers are strong, not necessarily because they have biceps, but in their ability to face the future with laughter and confidence as described in our reading today, Proverbs 31, 25. She is clothed with strength and dignity and she laughs without fear of the future. A woman laughing at the time to come is not a woman who is looking at her biceps and getting encouragement. No, she's looking at her God and then getting encouragement. She knows a foreign invasion could happen in, in an instant. A deadly plague could sweep over her village. Her God, not her biceps, will be decisive. And Peter's, by the way, in his text, impart, uh, there's an important powerful text there in 1 Peter 3, 1 to 6. I quoted chapter verse 4 onwards. That says, rather it should be of your inner self the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. For this is the way the holy women of the past, who put their hope in God, used to adorn themselves. They submitted themselves to their own husbands, like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her Lord. You are her daughters. You hear that? If you do what is right and do not give way to fear, Indeed, a God-fearing woman displays a gentle and quiet spirit in a vessel intentionally designed to be physically weaker than a man, and yet she remains fearless. That's what I meant when I said earlier that I love, admire loving and strong women. They can lose a child, lose a husband lose her own health. They may face family crisis. They may witness the world becoming increasingly violent and question the future they are building for their children. Yet they persist, persist in their calling with diligence and fearlessness, consistently responding to adversity with kindness, love, and faith. And friends, night after night, they rise countless times to care for a sick or disabled child. 
drawing upon the strength that God provides. For God is their hope. Again, not their biceps. God is their rock. That is the power of a mother. <clears throat> now I invite you to unpack a treasure from today's reading from Proverbs. Now friends, picture this. A woman of strong character. A real diamond in the rough. What we just read in Proverbs 31, 10 to 31. It's not just some kind of ancient poetry about women, strong and loving. It's about real life superheroes we call women. And let me tell you, their worth beyond diamonds and rubies. Trust is one of those things that hard to define. But you know when you know it when you feel it. It's the bedrock of any relationship. The kind of security that comes from knowing someone's got your back no matter what. And Proverbs 31, women, she is the embodiment of trust. She is not just reliable. She is consistently present. A steady force in the lives of those she loves. Imagine, my friends, a world where you never had to second guess if someone will follow through. That's the world mothers create for her family. They don't just believe she will do what she says. They know it. It's a given. Like the sun rising every morning. Her dependability is a comforting as a lighthouse to a sailor in the darkest night. She is the kind of person who walks into a room and instantly everything just feels better. Not because she's loud or demands attention, but because her presence is like a warm blanket on a, child, on a chilly evening. Her character, her integrity, her very essence makes life smoother, more pleasant, just by being there. And you know what's really beautiful about this kind of trust? It's not for sale. You cannot buy it, trade, trade it, or fake it till you make it. It's earned day by day through actions, not just words. In the small things he does, the consistency, the care, the attention to detail, is the promises kept, the secrets held safe, and the unwavering support. So when we talk about Proverbs 31, woman and trust we are not just talking about someone who is good in a crisis we are talking about a way of life a commitment to being someone others can lean on and that my friends is priceless it's the kind of wealth that doesn't show up in bank accounts but it enriches lives beyond measure not only that she is trustworthy. She works hard. If you read verse 13 to 16, hard work is not just a concept for Proverbs 31 woman. It's her daily reality. She greets the dawn with purpose. Her mind already racing through the day's tasks. There is no time <clears throat> for idleness when there are mouths to feed and lives to nurture. Her hands are never still. Always busy, always creating, always providing. Imagine mom like this as a captain of a ship. Not just any ship, but one that braves the fiercest storms to bring treasures back home. Her determination is the compass that guides her and her strength, the sails that drive her forward. She knows the waters well, the ups and flows of family life, and she navigates them with skill and grace. In her world, chaos doesn't stand a chance. It's met with a calm resolve and a plan of action. She transforms disorder into harmony, making sure that when night falls, her household rests in peace and comfort. It's not just about putting food on the table. It's about creating a sanctuary where every need is met with love. And speaking about love, it's her secret ingredient. It's what turns her hard work 
into a labor of joy. Love is the energy that fuels her from the first light of the day until, until the stars take over the night sky. It's a powerful source, one that motivates her to give her best, to be her best for those she holds dear. From dawn till dusk, her love is constant, unwavering, and pure. And it's what makes her rise before the sun. And it's what keeps her going when the day is long and the work is hard. It's a testament to her character, a beacon that shines brightly, illuminating the true meaning of dedication and sacrifice. Trustworthy, work hard, not only those things, her beauty, oh, it's stunning. If you read verses 29, 31, when we talk about beauty, it's easy to think of what we see in the mirror. But Proverbs 31, woman, invites us to look deeper and define beauty differently, beyond the surface. She embodies a beauty that's not about the perfect reflection or the latest fashion trend. It's about the soul, the inner character that shines through every action and word. This kind and beauty has nothing to do with age or passing, nothing to do with age. It's timeless. It's the kind of beauty that comes from a life lived with reference and all before the Lord. It's a beauty that's cultivated through acts of kindness, through words of wisdom, through a heart that seeks after what is good and true. As the years pass, this soul deep beauty does not diminish. It flourishes. It becomes more profound, more compelling. It's like a garden that grows more lush and vibrant with time, drawing others in with its serenity and grace. This is, my friends, the beauty that lights up a room, that brings comfort to the weary and inspiration to the, dis, to the disheartened. It's a beauty that we all should aspire, a beauty worth pursuing, not with creams and powders, but with love, humility, and fear of the Lord. It's a beauty that doesn't need a mirror because its reflection is seen in the lives it touches, in the peace it brings, and in the legacy it leaves. The Proverbs 31 woman challenges us to redefine our standards of beauty, to recognize that the most stunning beauty is one that eyes cannot see, but the heart can feel. It's the beauty of a spirit in harmony with God himself, a life that echoes the purity of God and the love of Creator. It's the kind of beauty that never fades, that endures, through every season of life. So as we wrap up, let's not just clap for our mothers today. Let's show them our appreciation in every way we can. Let's be there for them like they have always been there for us. Let's make sure they know they are not just loved but cherished. After all, they are the heartbeats of our homes the architects of our character. And now, to all moms here and out there online, we see you, we love you, and we thank you. You are not just part of our stories. You are the cornerstone of our very being. So here's to you, the embodiment of Proverbs 31, the personification of strength, love and grace let's carry this message my friends in our hearts again not just today but every day let's make sure our moms feel the love they have so freely given to us reflected back at them a thousandfold so once again happy mother's day and friends moms grandmoms as an appreciation for your presence in our lives. 
we have something uh, uh, for you, for all women, moms, grandmoms here in this place. So, um, I need four volunteers. I have two already, Eva and Ben. Can I have another two to help distribute two on this side and another two on this side? Uh, two young. Oh, are you okay with that? Okay. Another one, uh, Reagan. Okay. So, Reagan and Carolyn on this side. Um, Eva and Ben on this side. So, moms, this gift is for you. Can I ask Cody to fill in some kind of music for us as we distribute this? <laughs> So the gifts is are over there at the back. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Reagan, uh, Caroline, Eva, and Ben. There are two moms upstairs on the balcony. Don't forget. Thank you everyone for helping out with the distribution. Fathers, don't be envious. Yours next month. <laughs> so come back again next month, June 16, for Father's Day celebration. Let us pray together. 
Lord Jesus, you came to us bearing God's love to live with us, to walk with us, and to show us how to love. You pray with us and for us day by day. So today we turn to you with our hopes and also concerns. Draw near to us, to those for whom we pray, so that your love will be known in our world today. Lord Jesus, on this Mother's Day or the Christian Family Sunday, we pray for the families we belong to. Thank you for parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents, grandparents, and for the generations who started our families and all they have given to us. Today, we thank you especially for our moms and pray for all the moms around the world. Give mothers hope for their children and peace in the world to raise their children safely. Comfort and support each member of our families and guide each child and young person into the future lord jesus we pray for families in our community and in your world we remember families in need families who are struggling under economic pressures family who know sorrow because someone has died or gone away families who live in fear because they are in the midst of some kind of trouble surround these families with your love and bring them courage to face whatever tomorrow brings and lord jesus we pray for each other and for our church family. Thank you for the gift of friendship and the fellowship that we share and the unique gifts each one brings to our life together. Show us our paths into the future and give us important things to do in your name. Amen. <clears throat> Friends, even as a season of Easter draws closer to its end this week, we continue to receive the blessings of uh, the blessings God pours out for us in Christ and in creation. So, in our offering time, our gifts to God speak of our gratitude for these blessings and our commitment to share them with the whole world. We're going to sing uh, hymn number 637, Take My Life and Let It Be Consecrated. present God. Bless the gifts we offer today with the power of your Holy Spirit. Use them, O Lord, and use us to witness to the love of Jesus Christ and bring healing and hope, first in the family, then to the world in your name. Amen. Doxology. May the Lord bless you.
Friends, may we take time to know the privilege of honoring our mothers today and remembering how they have inspired our lives. And let your people, O oh God, now go forth in peace. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.